Hi guys, this is Don. I have a problem that I've seen quite a few of you miss on the quiz, and I don't want you to miss it on the exam. And it is a mean difference problem. We're given that the null hypothesis is that mu1 is less than or equal to mu2. If the null is less than or equal, that means the alternative has to be mu1 is greater than mu2, which is the complement of less than or equal. We're given an alpha 0.01, and we're given sample statistics. Now, just looking at this, we should be able to recognize that this will be a t-test for two reasons. First of all, we don't have the population standard deviation sigma 1 or sigma 2. We've got sample standard deviations. The other thing is that both ends are less than 30. And usually you're safe if, if the ends are less than 30, then it's going to be a t-test. The other thing that is significant about this problem, and the one thing I think that has tripped so many people up, is that you're given that sigma 1 squared is not equal to sigma 2 squared. Sigma squared, of course, is variance. That means the variances are not equal. Now, they, they are, do give you the critical value of t of 2.998. And if we blow this curve up a little bit, we see over here to the far right at three uh, standard deviations, uh, we've got a blue area for some reason instead of a red area, but that's the rejection area, everything to the right of that 2.998. Okay. The test statistic is pretty straightforward. That's just mu1 minus mu2, or x bar 1 minus x bar 2, and that gives you a minus 36, which this student got correctly. But this student missed the standardized test statistic. This student answered minus 0.567. And I'll show you how she got that answer and why that answer is wrong when we get over to StatCrunch. So, let's go ahead and bring up StatCrunch and we need to enter well first of all we're going to go to stat and we're doing t stats and this is two sample with summary and we bring up this dialog box and we put in our data x bar one is 2273 standard deviation for that sample is 174 the n is 15 second mean is 2309 Standard deviation is 50, and n is 8. Okay, let's skip over the pool variances for a second. Let's set up our hypothesis test. We want that to, we know that the null is mu1 minus mu2 is less than or equal to 0. Now, StatCrunch always puts an equal sign there in your null hypothesis and the reason for that is that if the test is significant for the equality then it is going to also be significant for the less than side of that as well our alternative is what we've got to get in there correctly we want that mu1 minus mu2 is greater than zero that's our alternative Okay, now let's talk about the calculation options, pool variances. If you leave the default checked pool variances, you're saying that the variances are equal. And in this problem, we know that the variances are not equal. But let's go ahead and do the computation. And we get this dialog box. See, there's the where she got the wrong answer. Minus... 0.567, which is what she answered, and that's the wrong answer because we do not have equal variances and therefore we should not use pool variances. So let's go back and we're going to edit and we're going to uncheck pool variances 
and that means that we have unequal variances. Leave everything else the same. We'll click Compute. We get this answer now, a standardized t-statistic of minus 0.746, which is the correct answer. And we also get, because we ran this test, we get a p-value of 0.762. Now our alpha is 0 0.01, and 0 0.762 is much, much, much larger than 0 0.01. So that tells us we fail to reject the null hypothesis. But let's go ahead and look at the whether or not the test statistic of minus 0.746 is in the rejection region. And we go back, blow this curve up again, and our rejection region is that 2.998, that blue area there. We're over here at minus 0.746, so we're not in the rejection region, and that agrees with our probability of, of 0.762, very, very large, which says we, again, fail to reject the null hypothesis. And that's the answer that they get. The test statistic is not in the rejection region, and therefore we fail to reject.